You're watching college basketball from the high country inside of the Holmes Convocation Center for Boone, North Carolina. It's the Appalachian State Mountaineers playing host to the preseason MAC favorites, the Bowling Green Falcons. Hi, everyone. I'm Kendall Lewis alongside my partner, John Reister, here with you tonight in what should be a great matchup. These two teams match up extremely well on paper, John. When you look at Appalachian State, one of the top defensive teams in the country. Bowling Green, on the other hand, they can really score at will. So what has to give tonight? Well, I tell you, something is going to give Kendall. I mean, Bowling Green's given up a lot of points, 87 points a game. Appalachian State, number one in the nation, scoring defense and field goal percentage. So they're going to carry their defense up here. And, you know, Bowling Green's got to hit the boards. They're, they're kind of a donut when they take Swingle off the floor. And I tell you what, Appalachian State's going to have to make some shots. Appalachian State, one of the top defensive teams in the country, as we mentioned, going to be in their home whites tonight with the gold letters, gold trim down the side, gold numbers. Bowling Green is in the orange with the black letters and black numbers. Ready to tip it off here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And whistles come in before we are underway from the Holmes Convocation Center. Glad you're tuned in with us tonight on ESPN Plus from wherever you may be. It's Justin Forrest, the reigning all-first team Sunbelt selection. Dumped it inside to Gregory. He missed the bunny. First look at Bowling Green on offense. Caden Matheny, one of the top recruits out of last year's class for Michael Huger. Inside the Swingle. Working. On James Lewis, couldn't get the turnaround to go, and the Mountaineers pull down the rebound. That's a good job by Don Gregory, uh, bellying up the swing, giving up about 50 pounds to him down on the block. Did a good job of staying vertical and not getting the foul call. So a turnover in transition gives it back to the Falcons of Bowling Green. Told you they're the MAC favorites this year. Return a lot of players with quality minutes from a season ago. Active hands on D. This one poked away in transition, looking up ahead for Kendall Lewis. This one was picked off by the freshman. And back come the Falcons. And the Mountaineers want to play fast this year. Dustin Kearns wants to turn the tempo up, but they've got to do a better job taking care of the basketball. Here comes Delph for the Mountaineers. Good transition defense that time by Bowling Green. Justin Forey surveys the floor. He'll kick. Kendall Lewis thought about the three, and instead, the Mountaineers will work it back out front. Gregory inside, good ball movement for the Mountaineers. And nice work inside for Gregory to cut to the hoop and score. Excellent pass by James Lewis Jr. Getting it back inside to Donovan Gregory. Two nothing start, Mountaineers on the board first. Can the Falcons answer here? Kendall, you're going to see a lot of pick and roll. About 90% of what Bowling Green does all comes from their pick and roll, and they'll do it all over the floor, not just at the top of the key like a lot of teams. Swingle missed the bunny underneath the basket. Both these teams with great looks inside. A couple of early misses. We're about two and a half minutes into the first half here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Delph rises for three, and it's off the mark. Loose ball tracked down in the corner by Daquan Plowden. And I tell you, Matheny for um, Bowling Green is going to be a key here. They returned four starters. He's replacing a four-year starter that graduated last year, and that's asking a lot for a freshman straight out of high school. Matheny missed it off the curl for three, and this one trickles out of bounds back to the Mountaineers. And now a little full court pressure coming from Bowling Green. They'll do a little 2-2-1 two, two, candle. When they score, they'll do a 1-2-1-1, one, 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 which is a little more aggressive. They're just trying to work a little bit of time off the clock, not trying to get a steal. Just trying to slow you down a little bit. Mountaineers have been playing very, very uh, fast this year, so that's not surprising to see something to slow them down. Forrest trying to run her. Missed everything off glass. Back comes the freshman, Matheny. Head fake for Turner. Elevating and finishing. And the, the fifth-year senior can really do it all for this Falcons team. And he's going to score at every level, Kendall. He can take it to the hole. He creates his shot. Coach Kern says it's kind of an old-school game. 
he's not just settling for threes and layups. He's going to score from all over the floor. Dell thought about it. Kendall Lewis trying to streak to the cup. And they're going to call a travel. Too many steps for the sophomore from Snellville, Georgia. And he'll turn it right back over to the Falcons. And I tell you what, the Falcons have been impressive on the defensive end so far. Playing tight, closing down the passing lanes. A little bit different than what we saw on film coming into this game. Tidy two apiece, approaching the first media. Matheny just off the mark on the three, but there's a foul on the floor against Appalachic started here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. You got to watch out here. They always have something designed for either Turner or Trey Diggs on the inbounds. And Swingle, nice little hook shot there to give Bowling Green their first lead of the half. Don't have to run anything, Kendall. You just throw it into the big fella, and he just puts it in. How will the pressure from the Falcons affect the Mountaineers? John mentioned earlier, Appalachian State, they want to get up and down the floor as quick as possible. Contact and a foul. Couple of shots coming right after the timeout here on ESPN+. Plus. It's 4-2 early, Bowling Green on top of Appalachian State. Head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons, Michael Huger, in his sixth season at the helm. Take a look at his resume. Back-to-back 20-win -back seasons for this Falcons unit. They return a ton of players, including Justin Turner, one of the best guards in the country. Former assistant, as you can see, at Miami, George Mason. Spent time with Jim Laranega, and coaching at his alma mater was a awesome point guard for Bowling Green. From 89 to 1993, it's always great, John, when you see guys that go back and coach at their alma mater. Well, when guys go back and coach at their alma mater, Kendall, they, they know what it takes to win there. They know the problems that may exist, and they, they probably have a pretty good idea of how to fix it. But who better to sell the school than somebody that's, that was played there four years and had a high-level success? Caleb Fields matched up with Adrian Delf. Sizing him up. Instead, he'll toss it back. This is Plowden who will rise for the long two. And Almanasi with the rebound for Appalachian State. And that's Plowden's spot out there outside the arc. He doesn't shoot it very much out there, but when he's at the top of the key, he shoots a high percentage. Michael Almanasi, number five in white. Added depth for the Mountaineers this year as Delph rises, cashes in for three. That's his spot right there, Kendall. He likes that right side wing. It's good to see him make his second shot. He didn't make his first one, but he gets he could get, get going really, really quick. Matheny looking to create. Plowden pops out high. Fields will try it from distance, and he answers. He says, anything you can do, I can do just as well, and ties it at seven. Looks like they're extending up a little bit on the pressure, bringing a little bit more. Appalachian needs to get the ball in the middle of the floor and attack on that. Kendall Lewis gives it up. James Lewis, Jr., had his pocket picked, but there was too much contact along the baseline. That was Justin Turner who picked up his first. He just got there a step late. I think he got a lot of ball. He must have got a little bit on the wrist, too. He had a little better angle than we did. Yeah, looks like he got him on the arm a little bit. Good, strong uh, move to the basket by James Lewis, Jr. He had to believe he was going to flush that one down. James Lewis, Jr., nine ton of weight in the off season, almost 20 pounds. You can really see it in his upper body. Kendall, I didn't recognize him the first time I saw him, to be honest with you. He'd gotten so much bigger from his waist up. Playing at 6'8", 215 right now. That seems a little light to me, Kendall. I think they're hiding a little bit there in the, uh, <laughs> on the roster. And he goes two for two. App State with a 9-7 lead. Once again, Bowling Green, 1-1 one one on the season. Lost their opener against Michigan, 95-82. That was a great ball game. And then defeated South Carolina State a couple of days ago. 
And I tell you, Bowling Green's got number 11, Trey Diggs, on the floor now. He checked in at the timeout, and he is a sniper among snipers. He's shooting over 60% from three-point range, so the Mountaineers got to know where he's at at all times. Ziegler traveled. Mountaineer basketball. Bowling Green still in that 2-2-1 look. Full court pressure from the Falcons. And both these teams will mix it up defensively. App State wants to get up and down the floor. Forrest bullying his way into the paint and drug the pivot foot there, so another turnover right back to Bowling Green. Yeah, he forced it a little bit. Kendall tried to split two guys. To Bowling Green's credit, they, they closed that gap really, really quick. He had nowhere to go. Lots of dribble handoffs in the Bowling Green offense. Turner nowhere to go. Good pass inside to Washington that time. And back come the Mountaineers. Good D by Appalachian State. All modesty into the paint. Had it stripped away. Back into the hands of Delph. And that's more of the pace that I was looking to see from Appalachian. They've really been pushing the ball, trying to play a lot faster this year. I'm surprised that they've walked it up as much as they have. Gregory, strong take. It's five on four. Falcons with the numbers. Turner to the, to the hoop and finishes. And Bowling Green knows how to win those runouts. When they get the numbers, going to score that nine times out of ten. And a takeaway from Turner. The Euro in the paint and the teardrop. Two-point lead for the Falcons. And Appalachian State's got to be careful. They cannot let him get going. He can take over a game in, in a matter of moments. He could put 15 or 20 on you in a hurry. What are you looking for this possession out of Appalachian State? Four I like, unanswered for Bowling Green. I'd like for him to get the ball inside, but then again, Justin Turner making a 25 foot three. I mean, Justin Forrest making a 25 foot three is not going to hurt either. <laughs> App State by one, 12 11. Just over 12 and a half to play first half. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you on ESPN. Plus. Ziegler picks up his dribble. Here's Turner. Sizzles his way into the paint, and he got Forrest in the air. Hard collision. Two free throws coming for Justin Turner, the two-time first-team All-Max selection. And he's very, very good on this mid-range game. Look how he gets him up, brings, uh, you know, invites the contact. It's still strong enough to get the ball up towards the basket. Had a chance to go in and make three-point play. This kid can really fill up the basket, Kendall. He can really, really get it going. An absolute bucket for Michael Huger's crew. Swirls in the first free throw. Justin Turner's just 304 points away from becoming the all-time leading scorer at Bowling Green. And they've had some really good players come through that program. One of the best guards in the country, one of the most underrated guards in the country this year that really no one's talking about. He had the opportunity in the transfer portal to join up with some Power 5 programs elected to stay with Bowling Green. Well, he, he had a chance to pretty much go anywhere he wanted. Power 5 schools uh, were all over him. He had graduated, so he had his pick of what he wanted to do. Really happy to see him come back. Uh, the coaches had invested a lot of time and effort into him. You know, and his little brother's on the roster, too. I'm sure that had something to do with it, but... I really like seeing guys coming back and finishing what they started. Good ball movement for the Mountaineers as Lewis buries a three. And that's something Kendall Lewis did not have in his repertoire last year was the three-point shot. You could tell he's put in a lot of time. Nice move from Ziegler. He couldn't finish. Can the Mountaineers add to their two-point lead here? All modesty. Kendall Lewis, he'll stroke it again from downtown. Someone may have gotten a piece. That one missed everything, and back come the Falcons. I think Trey Diggs got a piece of the ball on that. Turner had his pocket picked. Transition for the Mountaineers. And Almonacy, the lead feed, just a little too long, which takes us to another media timeout. 11.20 left to go in the first half. It's App State by two. We've got a good one here tonight inside of the Home Vacation Center.
Dustin Kearns in his second season at the helm for the Appalachian State Mountaineers. 18 wins in year one. Remarkable job by this coaching staff when, when you talk from where they were two years ago. And that's the most since the 2009-2010 season. He did that in year one. Most Lujos rolling in Big South play a couple of years ago. Field sizing up Lewis. Plowden thought about it. Instead, he'll streak to the bucket and tie it at 15. And I tell you what, Ken, that kid can really get to the basket. 6'6", six, six, probably 220, explosive. I'm surprised he didn't hammer that thing in. He's known for his dunks. He was all over the highlight films on YouTube for his dunks last year. Really, really good player. Kendall Lewis feeds James Lewis Jr. underneath. Going to work, bulldozing his way to the cup. Two more for James Lewis Jr. What a strong move by James Lewis Jr. Wow, went right up through Plowden. Not many guys are going to be able to do that. And that's where that 20 pounds in the weight room comes into play this year. This one deflected. Good takeaway. The Mountaineers, active hands on D. We told you, one of the best defensive teams in the country. They are stingy. And Michael Almonese. The grad transfer from Southern New Hampshire, number five in white, handles the rock right now. C.J. Huntley, the 6'10 freshman, just checked in for the Mountaineers. Kendall Lewis trying to create his own. Dangerous pass, tapped around, and they say last touch by Lewis on the baseline. So this will go back to the Falcons of Bowling Green. Once again, I'm a little surprised that we're not seeing a little pressure from the Mountaineers on that dead ball situation. Mountaineers have shown full court pressure in their first two games, wins against South Carolina State and Carver. Off the heel of the rim on the three ball that time. Back come the Mountaineers. James Lewis Jr. muscles his way up again. He is an absolute monster right now for the Mountaineers. Wow, has he improved over last year. He's a completely different player. Fields, short, gets his own miss. Good pass. And this one rejected, not once but twice. By Donovan Gregory, quick great, off his feet. Great D by the Mountaineers. And they'll reset. They need to get a good shot here. Bowling Green's done a really good job in their half-court defense. Gregory trying the floater. It was wild. Up and over the backboard. That one was whistled down. And it'll be Falcons basketball. So Appalachian State with a four-point lead here, John. And they've made four of their last five shots. The momentum in Dustin Kearns' group's favor right now. Yeah, their, their defensive effort is starting to pay off. They're getting the ball down a lot quicker because they're not having to face that 2-2-1 pressure off the makes uh, by Bowling Green, which is giving them more time to run their half-court offense, which is turning into easier shots. Davin Ziegler, the sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. Here's Turner, just so elusive, quick. You see it there, dancing to the cup, and the follows there that time as Bowling Green pulls within two. Good block from behind by James Lewis Jr. Just wasn't enough activity on, on the defensive glass. Easy put back by Bowling Green. Josiah Fulcher with the two there for the Falcons of Bowling Green. Mac versus Sunbelt here tonight. Gregory from long range. Big rebound for Trey Diggs. A chance to tie or take the lead here for the Falcons. And that's an offensive foul going the other way. David Ziegler called for the charge, which takes us to another media timeout here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. 19-17, App State on top by two. You're watching college basketball on ESPN+. App State held 13 opponents under 60 points last year. Talk about how stingy they are defensively. And, John, 
What are your thoughts on how they've handled Justin Turner and the Falcons of Bowling Green here in this first half so far? Well, they definitely have slowed them down rather than speeding them up like I thought they were going to do. Um, you know, besides Turner, nobody's really done anything for Bowling Green. Uh, you know, he's got eight points. So, um, you know, it's it's – it's not surprising because the app's hanging their hat on the defense, and they're doing a great job. Four-point Mountaineers lead after the follow. Matheny's back in the game for the Falcons of Bowling Green. Had it knocked loose. Gets it back to the top. Diggs will try a three. That one was blocked. And here come the Mountaineers again in transition. They want to push it and go. Kendall Lewis gets the shooter's roll. And the largest lead of the game from either team. It's six now, 23-17. And, that, and that's what I'm used to seeing from the Mountaineers this year, getting up and down off of the uh, defensive rebound. Good job, Kendall Lewis getting to the rim. That's his game. And um, I'm hoping to see some more of that. They need to keep pushing, Kendall. You take a look at the flop warning. There was a flop warning on the floor. And by the NCAA rule book, Turner, good pass, really threaded the needle that time into Swingle for his first two of the game. Along with being the leading scorer, he's also leading them in assists with close to four a game. Very, very good passer. Just so smooth. I think when you watch Justin Turner of Bowling Green, it's almost like the game just slows down for him and, and players just kind of start watching. He's very good with the dribble. He can get anywhere he wants to with the dribble, and he doesn't force things. That's, that's what makes it so smooth. Forrest to trigger it in. He's been quiet in the first half. Only three points, one of two shooting. Last year was the Mountaineers' leading scorer, first team all Sunbelt selection. Delph sets his feet for three, you bet. That's his spot. Sweet stroke for Adrian Delph. Matheny gets to the cup, high off the window and finishes. And I tell you, Kendall, he's strong for a freshman. If you look at him, I was pretty close to him uh, earlier uh, before the game, and he's, he's a thick kid, he's strong. Listed at 180, coming in as a freshman. Turner with the active hands. Fulcher in transition and just finished at the rim. A streaking Kendall Lewis from behind was going to try to swat that away. And right now, the Mountaineers are playing without a true point guard on the floor. So I would not be surprised if Bowling Green did extend their defense out and try to put a little more pressure on the ball. And Delph. Loses it out of bounds. We'll go back to the Falcons of Bowling Green. Well, you look at it right now, nine turnovers in the first half from Appalachian State, but they have a three-point lead. And Justin Turner with the Ball in his hands, rises for the J and miss short. Here comes Kendall Lewis in transition, trying to draw the contact, and he does. And are they going to get Turner? If they give it to Turner, that's going to be his second. Going to be interesting here. And it is Turner's second, and there's still five minutes left to play in the first half. So Michael Huger's got a decision to make here. Do you chance that and leave your top scorer and one of the best players in program history? Nope. Going right to his bench as Caleb Fields checks in. And doors open for the Mountaineers right now without the Falcons' best player on the floor. And this, this could be a chance for them to extend this lead out. Really the only guy out there that's known for putting the ball in the hole is Trey Diggs, number 11. So they got to really keep a good eye on him because he can, he can stroke it from anywhere deep on three-point line. Trying to feed Swingle. 
Swingle, the 6'10", 295-pounder, rejected by James Lewis and dealt from behind that time. It's a jump ball. Arrow will keep it with the Falcons. Wow, great help defense by Adrian Delph right there, coming from behind for the block. And here we'll see it. There he comes, right there, right from behind. And that's hard to do on a guy that big and that thick. And here's Diggs with the ball. Diggs, a size advantage on Delph. Excuse me, Gregory, but Delph ripped it away. Kendall Lewis trying to save it back in play. He does. Out to Forrest for an open look. And a fight for the rebound. Lewis back up, no. Matheny trying to lasso it in. And it's like pinball out there right now. Finally, the Falcons reclaim possession. They'll try and reset here with 4.15 left to play and a travel, a shuffle of the feet. Turns it back over to Appalachian State. I like this move by Coach Kearns to get Michael Amosley back into the game. Calm things down a little bit down on the offensive end. Michael Almonese, the grad transfer, he's from Brentwood, New York. Played at Southern New Hampshire last year, averaged over 15 a game on 45% shooting. He started his collegiate career at Stony Brook. He's added depth for Dustin Kearns as Gregory couldn't get the turnaround to go. Back comes Bowling Green. Swingle can shoot it from there. He thought about it, instead gives it up to Fields. Plowden. Attacks, tied up again, and this time it's going back to the Mountaineers. Good defense from Donovan Gregory in Appalachian State, which takes us to our final media timeout of the first half. 3.42 remaining here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. We've got a good one here on ESPN+. Plus. been a very balanced scoring attack for the Appalachian State Mountaineers this year. You look at the averages, you've got a couple of guys in double figures and then three tied at nine points per game, also another tied at for eight points a game. Really, you can go down the list. You can't really key in on these guys this year. So many weapons for the Mountaineers. Well, and a lot of those points are being scored in transition in their first two games uh, off of their defense. That's one thing we haven't seen a lot tonight, and I think that's a Reflection of the score being so low. Forrest lost the handle. Justin Turner is on the bench for Bowling Green with two fouls. Picked up his second with the 504 mark. Good ball movement. Almonese buries a triple and the largest lead of the half for the Mountaineers. Much better job that time by letting the defense come to them instead of trying to force it into the lane that time for the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Momentum in the favor of App State right now. Plowden answers, much needed. Daquan Plowden can play inside and out for this Bowling Green unit. Kind of a tweener at 6'6", but you saw the range that time. Forrest will step back. Fulcher with the weak side board, and back come the Falcons. Dylan Swingles off the floor as well. Plowed in again. Someone might want to get a hand in his face. That's two in a row for Daquan Plowden. Now that's normally where he usually makes his threes in the top third of the court right there. But, uh, yeah, once he gets going, he can get going too now. He shoots about 36% from three, so he can make those, he can make those shots. So a mini 6-0 run with Turner on the bench right now. Almonese again connects. It is raining threes from both sides here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center right now. And a timeout on the floor at the 2.08 mark here in the first half. So all of a sudden, both teams starting to heat up a little bit from three-point land. Yeah, the, things are starting to, you know, I don't know if it's late in the half and they're getting a little tired defensively. I know both of them have, have kind of drop back into the lane a little bit more instead of extending out. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit more breathing room on the perimeter and it, and it could be that, you know, just they've done a good job of clogging things up in the middle and, and maybe that's what Dustin Kearns was taking the time out for. It's like, hey guys, we're playing great defense. We got to get back out there. 
got to get back out and contest these shots. So Bowling Green's made five of their last seven from the field here. They trail by five. And as we told you, Justin Turner is off the floor for the Falcons. Long range two, and Fulcher somehow got it to go. I think, John, that's the challenge for this Bowling Green team, if there is one this year, is can they find that third, fourth score outside of Turner and Plowden? Right. Plowden has proven to be the number two, and I think you're right. Number three still up for grabs. So, you know, uh, I would look for Diggs to maybe be that guy as prolific a three-point shooter as he is. But, you know, they got a lot of guys that can put the ball on the floor and get in the lane. So uh, it's less to be, left to be seen, but they've, they've got some guys that can score. Almonese took it away from Matheny. And the error is going to favor Bowling Green, who trails by five. Just can't quite get over the hump here the last four or five minutes. Since Turner left the floor, the Mountaineers have been in control. Well, and Turner handles the ball a lot for them. Once they get into the half court, uh, the ball is usually in his hands. So um, they're, they're being asked right now to do some things that they're not used to doing because Justin Turner normally does not get in foul trouble. Young lost control momentarily. Shot clocks at four. Into the paint, Fields. And a blocking foul is called. Dustin Kearns wanted to charge there. Well, and it looked like it was a travel before all that contact happened, too. So I, I think you got, you got a situation here where I think Bowling Green kind of dodged a bullet. Get a second look there. That is team foul number three on the Mountaineers. This has been a pretty clean first half from both teams. It really has been. For as aggressive as both teams have been on the defensive end, I'm a little surprised that we're not into the bonus yet. And a foot on the sideline was Fulcher. He'll turn it back over. Final minute of the half with App State leading by five. This is a big possession for Mountaineers. Last couple have been a little bit um, disorganized, coming out of a timeout, you should, you should have something drawn up here to get a good shot. Forrest rises. And Fulcher skies for the rebound for the Falcons of Bowling Green. Matheny from NBA range, you bet. Much needed for Bowling Green as they pull within two. And he was a 25 points a game scorer in high school. He was known for his three-point shooting, so that should come as no surprise to the Mountaineers. They should have gotten out there and covered him. Matheny, a three-time All-State selection from Morgantown, West Virginia. And player of the year in the entire state his senior year. Shot clock at eight. Game clock at 10, about a two-second differential. And Forrest had it knocked out of his hands. So with 5.3 ticks left and two left on the shot clock, an interesting scenario here. Maybe have time for a catch and shoot, maybe a, a catch and a shot fake here. Five seconds is a long time. You don't need to rush. And Gregory just got it off to beat the shot clock. Oh, the shot clock. Oh, so I was looking at the game clock. Yeah, it didn't draw iron, so it was actually a shot clock violation. And Bowling Green, two seconds. What do you look for here? Throw it deep, maybe one dribble. You can get it to half. Go okay, well, they're resetting it to 3.3, which makes okay, a world of difference. Okay, that makes a world of difference you now. You can dribble the length of the court in three seconds. I would, I would think they're probably going to try to get the ball to Matheny heading towards their goal and uh, put some shooters around the three-point arc is what I would try to do. There's so a lot you can do in three seconds. Timeout Bowling Green, who trails by two. Big three from Caden Matheny, the freshman there, to pull him back within two. And it's been a dogfight in this first half for both teams. And Bowling Green really got behind the eight ball when Justin Turner had to come out of the game with still five minutes left in the first half. But I tell you what, they've responded, Kendall. They, they, they've cut the lead down, and um, you know, guys have stepped up. They're taking better care of the basketball. Of course, they had, I think, four threes in that stretch, too. I think you had uh, uh, Daquan Plowden made – 
two, and then we had Matheny make one. I believe some, Caleb Fields made a knock one down too. But, uh, yeah, they've battled. They've done a good job without their best player. They've made their last four shots as well. Young from midcourt nearly got it to go. That almost went, Kendall. 36-34, a clean look for Bowling Green there to end the half. Just popped in and out. And the Mountaineers, head of the locker room with a two-point advantage. We'll recap the first half stats and numbers, show you some highlights, and talk a little bit more about these two teams at halftime. We'll take a quick break, though, here on ESPN+. Plus. You're watching men's college basketball. Combined 10 made threes in the first half between App State and Bowling Green as the Mountaineers have a two-point lead here at halftime. Kendall Lewis alongside John Reister here with you. Let's show you some of those highlights from the first half. Plenty to go around, and really late in the first half, both teams started to heat up. You see Justin Turner, the two-time All-Max selection, getting it done early for Bowling Green. But how about Appalachian State? You, we mentioned that you can't key in on just one guy. They have so many shooters on the floor. They, they had a couple guys make some big shots. Justin Forrest right there. Adrian Duff's got two threes. James Lewis Jr. did a fantastic job early in the first half inside and then uh, kind of, you know, I don't want to say he disappeared, but uh, he turned the ball over a couple times and, and Coach Kearns took him out. And, you know, it's just uh, Mike Almancy made makes a big three right there. But you're right, the teams I think kind of settled in a little bit, got a little more comfortable, didn't try to push things like they have been early in the half. 36-34, once again the score, and that was a big time bucket for Justin Forrest there, absorbing some contact as well. When you look in the turnover department, both of these teams turned it over 10 times in the first half. So we'll see if they can clean that up in the second, but a physical first half between Appalachian State and Bowling Green. It's 36-34. We'll be right back on ESPN Plus. I mean, we could talk, we can talk about. 36-34, uh... Appalachian State with a two-point lead. It's halftime here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you on ESPN Plus. Glad you're tuned in with us tonight. Let's take a look at the stats and numbers from the first half for these two teams. And they are virtually identical when you look in a lot of different departments, nearly the same from the field. App State is 50% from three-point land, which is a difference there. Yeah, um, I I was looking at the stats, Ken, and I, nothing really jumped out at me. Uh, it's And then you look at the scoreboard and you got a two-point game. So it's kind of indicative of, of the kind of game that we have here. What I'm looking forward to in the second half is, is, you know, we've got two prolific scores in this game. We've got Justin Turner for Bowling Green, and we've got uh, Justin Forrest for Appalachian State. I think what could be a determining factor moving forward is which one of these guys get hot. And both of them are used to scoring points very quickly, okay, and it, it could happen. And that's what I look to see happen in the second half. I think one of these two guys are going to heat up, and that's going to be a difference in the game. Well, some Bell fans know about Justin Forrest. He had three game winners for the Mountaineers. If it comes down to the last possession, he is dangerous. And this one has been back and forth in the first half, as you see there. Both teams, both head coaches and Michael Huger and Dustin Kearns have to be extremely happy with the way these two teams shot it from the three-point land there in the first half as well. Well, and I tell you, Kendall, the, the, nobody's in foul trouble on either side. Uh, they, uh, Bowling Green dodged a bullet there. Turner got a second, but they played their way through that, got it to halftime, and, and are still close. So, you know, coaches, they are at they can do anything they want in the second half. If they want to bring pressure, if they want to drop back, if they want to push. Uh, so it's, it's basically a two-point game, and the coaches have the freedom to do what they feel like they need to do to take the next step and win this game in the second half. Bowling Green converted on four of their last five shots to end the first half. We'll take another quick break. Second half is on the way from ESPN+. Plus. Thirty-six, thirty-four. as we come back to you, getting set to begin the start of the second half between Appalachian State and Bowling Green. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you tonight on ESPN+. Plus. Let's take a look at the preseason conference polls for both of these teams. 
We told you that Bowling Green was picked to win the MAC this year. You take a look at all the votes that they received in the preseason coaches poll, and rightfully so with Justin Turner and so many other weapons returning like Daquan Plowden. And then you look at Caden Matheny, the freshman that they landed in the, in the offseason, was a big-time recruit. This is a very competitive MAC year in and year out. It'll be no different this year. No, and, and they had four starters coming back, which uh, I think had a lot to do with the votes that they got. Preseason player of the year, Justin Turner. Um, Daquan Plowden was second team preseason all-conference. So they had uh, another four-year starter, Caleb Fields, a three-year starter, I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, defensively uh, on the perimeter, they're one of the top teams in their league. So everything added up. It makes a lot of sense to me, but you're right. From top to bottom, they're tough. They're going to have to come play every night. Certainly a tough conference, the MAC. And then let's look at the Sun Belt this year. And Appalachian State kind of feels like they've been disrespected, picked fourth on the East. I think they're much better than that in what we've seen the first three games of the season. I agree with you, Ken. Uh, I, looking through all the uh, preseason publications and, and knowing what most teams have coming back versus and you know adding who they brought in I can't see how they're going to finish anywhere lower than maybe second or third in in the league now that's you know with everybody you know coming together playing well um, but really the only team that's to me is bulletproof is Arkansas Little Rock they've got everybody coming back and they won the league last year well and you look at UTA UT Arlington played Oklahoma State very tough a few nights ago of course Little Rock and Coastal Carolina with Devontae Jones, an electric guard for Cliff Ellis's crew. Coastal Carolina, the shot to clears, could be very competitive as well this season. The Sun Belt from top to bottom is always very balanced. No different than the MAC. This is a great game between these two teams. We said it coming in. They match up well on paper, but their conferences usually tend to beat up on one another, if you will. And then when you look at these two teams, they've never played before. This is the first meeting between these two, Bowling Green and Appalachian State, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Both programs on the rise in college basketball and an immediate foul to start the second half 11 seconds in against the Falcons of Bowling Green. And that was a good execution there by the Mountaineers running a set, getting the ball inside Donovan Gregory, and he attacked the big fellow. And got to the free throw line. Much better offense than they had late in the first half. So Donovan Gregory, another one like James Lewis Jr. that's really improved in the offseason. Misses it long. Gregory's just a sophomore from Charlotte. Made two starts last year. Played at Charlotte Christian. As well as Carmel Christian in his prep career. Carmel Christian, they won back-to-back -back state titles. And he was, he was battling some foot injuries last year, Ken. I don't think he was ever full speed. And uh, he's also really jumped in, according to, Coach, according to Coach Kearns, into the leadership role of this team. Here comes the trap down low. Turner is going to kick. Fields hesitates, then pulls the trigger. And tapped out of bounds. This will stay with the Falcons of Bowling Green. Bowling Green's one of those teams. They're not looking to just get the ball inbounds. They're trying to score. Turner trying to get to the cup. Fields has the baseline and had it taken away. Almonese, a three-on-one. The lob, Kendall Lewis looking for the alley. And there was a foul in midair. He was hacked on the arm. Yeah, Daquan Plowden came in at the last minute. Might have got a piece of him on the arm. Good effort by Plowden to get back to the player. That would have been showtime for the Mountaineers. There's some length and athleticism on this Mountaineers team. You see Kendall had, a, had something to say after the, the hard foul there, yeah. and he's at the free throw line now, he, cashes in on the first. He needs to be careful with that because Mr. Plowden's got quite a resume of uh, thunder dunking on top of people. So you, you got to be careful who you're uh, pointing your finger at. I don't think that's the guy. Well, Kendall is – much improved from last year as well. He's put on about 20 pounds for the Mountaineers. And they still list him at 6'7", but I tell you, I stood next to him 
He's a lot taller than that. Matheny just misses from the corner. Swingle finds Fields underneath. Puck it plus the foul. Nice finish by Caleb Fields at 6-2. Used his body to screen off the two Mountaineers defenders. You got to love it. Both teams leaving it all out on the floor. It's been a physical game and a well-officiated game as well. The officials letting these two play and competitive juice is flowing for both sides here tonight. So a chance to complete a three-point play is Caleb Fields, the junior from New Jersey. And there's a discussion. I think one of the Mountaineers players uh, yeah, Michael Al cleaned up. Almonese is getting taped up there on the sideline. He's provided quality minutes for the Mountaineers, not only in this game, but to start the season. So Caleb Fields, a chance for Coach Michael Huger. He's going to have to be big in MAC play this year for the Falcons as well. He's their glue guy. He does all the things that don't show up on the stat sheet, lead, defend. And um, once again, like you said, he's going to be asked to do a lot more this year, but he's, he's very, very, very important to this program. In and out was Almonese. Bowling Green wants to run. Matheny nearly lost it, saves it, and it was out of bounds. Last touch by Field, so it's a turnover right back to the Mountaineers. App State catches a break there. Yeah, a little careless with the ball. The Falcons were that time and um, just got in a little bit of a hurry. Probably should have pulled that out and ran something. Turner hasn't touched the ball this half, which is very surprising. He, everything usually runs through him. Can Lewis faces up this time with Plowden. Gets to the cup, was blocked from behind, and it will stay on this end with the Mountaineers. Yeah, I think Mr. Plowden had a little bit something to say to Kendall that time. <laughs> well, those two going at each other right now. You got to love that matchup. Kendall Lewis at 6'7", listed, although looks taller than that. Daquan Plowden at 6'6". Both of those guys can step out and shoot the mid-range, Jay. And even from three. Shot clock at five. Into the paint, Delph, the fall away, Jay. Tapped around, and Turner finally lassos it in. Here's Justin Turner. The long, rangy Kendall Lewis. Defending. That's a good matchup right there. Kendall Lewis being the best Mountaineers defender on the ball. He has shut down some quality opponents in the past. Nice pass. Swingle was hacked on the arm and finishes. Good strong finish by the big fella. Yeah, he got hit on the way up and due to his strength, he was able to finish right over the top of Kendall Lewis. So a chance to tie the game at 39 all early in the second half. And he does. The big fella knots it up at 39. And here comes the 2-2-1 full court press from the Falcons of Bowling Green. We saw this in the first half, John. Mountaineers did a good job of handling it, but really, Michael Huger, of course they want to force turnovers, but the main thing to slow down the pace of the Mountaineers. Slow things down, eat up a little bit of the shot clock. Uh, not really looking for turnovers, although they have extended it out in the past and been more aggressive. Haven't seen that from them tonight. James Lewis bullies his way to the rack again. And I would love to see James Lewis Jr. get cranked up again. He's working hard in there. He's got a tough matchup, though, with Dylan Swingle. Swingle's got him by about three inches and probably close to 50, 60 pounds. Turner bounces it low for Swingle. And this one out of bounds off of Michael Almonese. Great help there by Almonese. He did a great job of sliding down like you like to teach on the weak side. Kept Swingle from getting an easy one. Here's Turner again. Rises. He got Kendall Lewis in the air and draws the contact. But, uh, yeah, Justin Turner's just got all the tricks of the trade. And he hadn't missed a free throw all year, so it's, it's a good place for him to be is at the line. How about this for his stat? Of course, early in the season for Bowling Green, but these guys, 84.5% from the free throw line. 
to start the season. We're in the third game of the year. That's an incredible stat, and that's one that can certainly, in, a, in what's normally a tightly contested MAC with games that come down to the wire, can win a team a lot of games. Free throws win and lose a lot of games, and three of their five starters, Kendall, have not missed a free throw yet this year. So it's not just guys that are coming in occasionally and making them, but these are the guys that have the ball in their hands. Delf eludes the trap. Almonese kicks it back. Forrest looking to get into the paint. Shot clock's at five. Almonese buries a three. Big shot. Big shot right there for Almonese. At the end of the shot clock. Had to get it up. Big time three for the grad transfer. Plowden handled the bullet pass that time for Turner. Inside to Swingle. He's got the size advantage on James Lewis and kisses it off the glass. Little late night banking hours here I tell in you Boone, what, North Carolina. He's he's a skilled big now. He 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 can when he gets it down that low and that close to the basket, he's he's a he's a handful. And a foul against Matheny of Bowling Green takes us to our first media timeout of the half. 15-43 left to play. It's App State by one. We come back to you on ESPN Plus. Kendall Lewis, John Reister inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Only 25 fans allowed in attendance in this one. So we're glad you're tuned in from home. And just what a great effort from everyone involved to make college basketball happen. Athletic directors, schools, conferences all across the country. Forrest. Slings this one to Adrian Delph with the corner pocket three. What a good look from the opposite side of the floor. Beautiful skip pass. Just didn't get the shot to go. And Turner with the rock in his hands. Decisively pulls up and knocks down another three. He is so smooth. Not just the stroke, but the way he moves on the floor. A great perpetual motion. He is so good off of the dribble, creating for himself and others. He's, he's just a matchup nightmare. App State's had great ball movement here today. Forrest draws the blocking foul on Matheny. Yeah, that was a little bit of an acting job there. I think Justin might have thrown the forearm out, but not enough to make him fly eight feet across the floor. Might have gotten the call if he didn't act quite as much. And checking in is Trey Diggs. And I keep waiting for Diggs to get going because, boy, I tell you what, he went off in the second half against Michigan. He was 6 for 10 in the second half from three-point range against the Wolverines. I believe it was last Wednesday afternoon. Quick pass inside to Gregory going to work and is able to finish off the window. Good, strong, aggressive move by Donovan Gregory. Good assist by Justin Forrest. Justin Turner, double figures in 22 of 25 games last year for the Falcons. And they are so dangerous when the ball is in his hands. Turner again looking for space. Into the paint, the Euro digs. He'll fall away and cash in. Good job by Diggs getting to the mid-range right there. Mountaineers know what kind of shooter he is, so adding that weapon to his repertoire is going to really give him uh, some points this year, getting to that mid-range game. Off the curl, it's Delph. Wait a minute, an offensive foul away from the basketball. That's a moving screen on James Lewis Jr. That's his second. That's team foul number four on the Mountaineers here in the second half. Neither team got into the bonus, by the way, in the first half. And, and I praise the officiating for that. They're in midseason form already. Let these teams decide who's going to win this game. Just let them play. Turner, the floater. He's got it from all three levels, John. And I tell you, he's heating up. He's heating up. And they better find a way to get the ball out of his hands. They're running the high pick and row with him and Plowden. And Plowden will step out and knock that three at the top if you double-team Turner on the penetration. 
Omanese, nice jab step, absorbs the contact. Upper body strength for Michael Omanese. And he's really brought a spark to the Mountaineers off the bench here in the second half. Providing good ball handling and, and penetration. Back to Turner again. This time a cutting Caleb Fields for two. Beautiful ball movement by the Falcons. And Almonese got caught peeking at the ball that time. Got caught on a back screen. Good execution off the high post for the Falcons. What do you hope to see here for the Mountaineers on this possession? They just need to be patient. They need to get a good shot. Forget about the shot clock. Execute. Trying to drop it off. This one taken away. Swingle, the big fella, took it away from James Lewis. Here comes Caleb Fields. Turner attacking downhill. A change of hands. Yeah, Coach Kearns is going to need to call a timeout here soon if they can't figure out a way to keep him out of the lane. And he's going to call timeout. Mountaineers want to talk about things. Five-point Bowling Green lead, and they've made – their last seven shots here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Bowling Greens made their last seven shots here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And you see how prolific of a scorer Justin Turner is. Came into tonight only 304 points shy of claiming the program record for the Falcons. App State really needs a bucket here. Well, you look, kind of gotten overshadowed by the made shots of Bowling Green in the, the run, but they've made four of their last five. Both teams are really shooting it well as Almonese just missed fires from three, but an offensive board and a fresh 20 on the shot clock for the Mountaineers. Nice rebound by R.J. Wilson. Good, strong, two-handed rebounded over the bigger Swingle. Forrest feeds it inside. Gregory, he'll kick. Open look this time for R.J. Wilson. And here come the Falcons. They want to push the tempo. This step back three. Diggs, what a dagger to increase their lead to eight. I tell you what, Diggs gets going. Along with what Justin Turner's doing right now, the Mountaineers are in trouble. They're going to be in trouble because I'm telling you what, Diggs can fill it up. R.J. Wilson hands it off. Forrest, he'll try to connect. Missed everything on the three. And I don't mind that shot from Duck Justin Forrest. He's got to find a way to get himself going. Turner again attacking and drawing the foul. That time it's against Forrest. And the Falcon bench is up, Kendall. They're excited. They're ready to go. They feel the tempo changing in this game. So at 10.45, we're going to take another media timeout. 56-48. Bowling Green on top of Appalachian State. We'll be right back. Local businesses, families, and schools play a vital role in our community. So does your electric cooperative. We do more than keep the lights on. Bowling Green, nine of their last nine on a 7-0 run over the last two minutes and nine seconds. And, John, if you're Appalachian State right now, what do you do to slow down this downhill attack from Justin Turner and the Falcons? Well, you've got to show them something different. They've played straight man the entire game. I know they've uh, played in the past. They've done some junk defenses. It's kind of a desperate attempt to change things around, but you got to figure out a way to get the ball out of Turner's hands. But then they got weapons on the outside, too, with Diggs warming up. So my, my point is what you're doing is not working, so you got to change. you got to figure something else out. Turner perfect at the free throw line for the season, not just for tonight. Six of six tonight. And this is the largest lead from either team. Appalachian State led by as many as six in the first half. Kendall Lewis, the size advantage that time over Cam Young. Almonese dials another one up from deep. And I tell you what, Michael Almonese really stepped up for the Mountaineers in the second half. Without him, 
they'd be have to have a double digit deficit right now. Turner eludes the double team, finds Plowden, fields a catch and shoot three, and that's their first miss in nine straight shots. Can the Mountaineers capitalize here? Back within single digits. Kendall Lewis likes it from three. This one tapped around. Big rebound from Diggs. Under 10 to play. Turner, quick crossover, the explosive first step. And just getting it done from that, any part of the floor. And that's just a mismatch. You can't allow him to get ahead of steam coming downhill at you. And uh, he'll just slice you to pieces if you let him get ahead of steam like that. It's just not fair. Kendall Lewis had it ripped away. It's Bowling Green team, very good defensively as well. Turner will pull it from NBA range. It was a bit of a heat check that time. Mountaineers need to push it. They're getting nothing out of their half-court offense. Almonese again. How about Michael Almonese heating up from three-point lands? You may be seeing a new star rising here in the mountains of Boone, North Carolina. Give him 17 points on six of seven from three-point land. Turner again attacking downhill. Mountaineers no answer for Turner right now. No, they, they need to change things up maybe. Go to a zone, maybe one possession, two possessions. Just give them something different to look at. R.J. Wilson a corner pocket three. Long rebound, tapped out by Diggs, a two-on-one, the lob, and Plowden just going to stick it in. All of a sudden, just like that, lead back up to 10 for the Falcons. Long rebound off the three from R.J. Wilson led to that break. Good pass, good recognition. This one's got to go back through all modesty, right? 17, 6 of 7 from three. He's the only one that's getting the ball anywhere near the basket. Wild shot from Lewis that time. Turner again. Plowden attacking. Man, that's going to be a charge. Back to the Mountaineers after the media timeout. So 7.57 left to play in the ball game. It's Bowling Green 64, App State 54. <coughs> Only 25 fans in attendance. Got some women's basketball players from Appalachian State in the building here. And the Mountaineers try to do all they can to stay unbeaten. And right now, it's been an absolute buzzsaw from Justin Turner here in the second half. 22 points, he's eight of 11 from the field, just really taking over the last five minutes for the Falcons. Yeah, and, and you know, if I was Coach Kearns, I, I would have to show something different defensively. Go zone maybe for a couple possessions. If you don't want to stay with it, you don't have to, but just a, you know, he's bringing the ball up. He's getting in the middle of your defense and pretty much doing anything he wants to do. So I think you've got to at least give a different look. Not the shot that the Mountaineers were looking for there. And here come the Falcons again. In transition, it's an offensive foul. And there's so, Michael Almonese again stepping in, taking the charge. That's what you would He's doing everything right now for the Mountaineers. An older player that just transferred in. Does the little things for Dustin Kearns' group. And that could be the shift in momentum that the Mountaineers need here. They needed a spark, and maybe that will wake them up a little bit. They're just having to work so hard on the offensive end for everything they get. Um, and, and maybe that's another reason to bring a little bit of pressure. They, the problem is you can't get in your pressure if you don't score, and they're having a hard time scoring. Letting this one roll as he picks it up near midcourt. Looking inside for Gregory. They dump it down low. And Donovan's very good inside. He's crafty. And drew some contact there. Just what the Mountaineers wanted there. Good possession by the Mountaineers. I this like time. the idea that they're trying to get the ball back inside, establish the inside presence again, um, get to the free throw line. You know, they did this a lot last year, Kendall. They would fall behind eight, you know, 10, 12 points, and then they they come together and they get the free throw line, stop the clock. And um, they've been in this position before. So I'm sure there's not a whole lot of panic over there. In and out was Gregory. And the free throw line magnified right now. The time just ticking away. Yep. 
And Gregory one for two that trip. And you see, I would have loved to see Appalachian get in their pressure right there. Looks like they're going to a zone. That's a great idea. Good adjustment by Coach Kearns. Looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. That's going to cover your shooters. Plowden tries a teardrop. And a fight for the loose ball as James Lewis tracks it down in the corner. Good possession defensively for the Mountaineers. Inside of Gregory as he faces up on Diggs. He'll fall away just in and out. Just tough luck on that shot. Did everything right. Ball just didn't go in. Here's the patient Justin Turner. Fifth-year senior that is an NBA prospect, no doubt about it. He's got the size and the athleticism, and Diggs is going to go to the line to try to complete a three-point play. And that, that situation there, you, you had Diggs, a senior, used to playing at this level, going against the uh, young C.J. Huntley freshman from Huntersville and um, just wasn't ready to fight through the three screens that they ran Diggs off of for that easy layup. So here's Trey Diggs, the senior from Niceville, Florida. Kind of the glue guy for this Bowling Green team, if you will. They go around Plowden and Turner. Yeah, he's the third guy that you need that can really light up the scoreboard uh, when teams do a good job on, on Plowden and Turner. Almonese takes it back. They dump it inside. James Lewis going to work, and he was bumped from behind. So a couple of free throws coming for James Lewis. His second trip to the line here tonight. And I like what the Mountaineers are doing right now, pounding the ball inside, getting to the free throw line. Also like what uh, Coach Huger's getting ready to do. He's getting ready to put Swingle in there to kind of slow that down. James Lewis, 33 games last year, made six starts. Started his college career at Chattanooga in the Southern Conference, go back three seasons ago. James Lewis, 60 offensive rebounds at Chattanooga. He's always had understood angles and had a nose for the basketball and, and pulling it in off the boards, but it's really taken his game to a whole new level this year. And that upper body strength, the weight that was gained in the weight room in the offseason has really paid off for James Lewis. And lazy pass for Swingle, taken away and nearly stolen back by the Falcons. Gotta Big three it. rattles in for Adrian Delph. He had to have that one. That's one of those where, oh my gosh, what are we doing? And it goes in. Big shot, got the lead back underneath 10. Mountaineers, good timeout. Single digit game as we'll keep it right here with 546 left to go in this one. Timeout. Bowling Green so still plenty of time for both of these teams and we mentioned it at the top of the broadcast really the first big test for Appalachian State this year after claiming victories over South Carolina State in Carver if they were able to come back and win this game would be a quality win over a quality opponent out of the MAC. It would be a signature win for a young Dustin Kearns team. Um, it would, I think, open a lot of eyes as to the potential that they would have moving forward. They're not going to play a team this year that's going to be able to score the ball as, you know, better than Bowling Green. Um, the thing that they have to do is they have to learn to play together. They're young. They lost three starters. But this is, like you said, this is a very important game for them. Open mid-range jumper from Young, couldn't convert. And I tell you what that zone's done is it's gotten the ball out of Turner's hands. The last two possessions, they've had people shooting the ball that they don't necessarily want shooting the ball, all because of that zone. Here's the kick. Open three from C.J. Huntley, but wait a minute, whistles before. I think he was standing out of bounds. Stepped on the sideline. That's oh, a tough break. That's a real tough break right there. That would have cut the lead down to four. And Huntley, a 6'10 freshman with a wingspan of seven feet. 
can shoot the three. He's going to be a good player for Dustin Kearns. He's going to be a 6'10", 6'11", wing player that can also play inside, and, and those are the kind of guys in this era of positionless basketball that you want. Good defensive player, too. Average over six blocks a game in high school. Turner thought about the three, and he was tied up. Jump ball, the call. Arrow favors the Falcons. Now, if they stay in this zone, in this out of bounds, you've got to keep a very, very close eye on Turner or, well, they don't have Plowton in. They've, they do some lob plays to the rim against them. Looks like the Mountaineers are going man, though. Matheny struggling to get it in. It was stolen away by Gregory, but then he was out of bounds and a hard collision up against the scores table from Trey Diggs. Yeah, he took it really hard on the corner with his ribs. They need to take a good look at him. That was quite a spill. Get a second look here. And back up quickly, which is a good sign for the Falcons. Donovan Gregory must have been standing out of bounds because it looked like he bounced the ball off Diggs. Officials kind of talking things over down on the floor. Our officials in this one here tonight, John Hampton, Garrick Shannon, and Zelton Steed. Good officiating crew on hand in the Holmes Convocation Center. This is going against the Falcons. Got a moving screen on Trey Diggs. He's trying to pop a little bit too soon, get out there to that three-point line. So 67-60, Bowling Green shooting 56% from the field. And the Mountaineers just hanging around, trying to get over the hump here late in the second half. And I tell you what, Bowling Green continues to switch those perimeter screens. They're going to get a mismatch on Matheny. Delf trying to back in Matheny. He'll fall away on this one. Big time rebound for Huntley. And he'll kick it back out. Fresh 20 on the shot clock. They'll dump this one inside. Another mismatch. James Lewis draws the contact. Nice job by the Mountaineers to exploit the mismatch there. And they're playing smarter now. They're looking for that mismatch. They've recognized that they're switching screens on the perimeter. There's no way that Caleb Fields at 6'2 can guard James Lewis Jr. down there on the block. So a couple of free throws coming. James Lewis, perfect 4 of 4 at the charity stripe tonight for the Mountaineers. He's got five rebounds as well on now 13 points. And the Mountaineers are scoring and the clock's not running. It's a good way to make a comeback. Continue to make good defensive stops. They've slowed down Bowling Green on the offensive end. Makes them both. There's Michael Huger. Sixth season for the Falcons of Bowling Green. And they're back. It looks, like, looks more like a 1-1-3 one, one, this time instead of the 1-3-1. One, one. Turner inside. Swingle over Lewis. No. Skying for the rebound was Fields. And the taller Donovan Gregory was able to pull it in. 7-0 run for the Mountaineers over the last two minutes. Thanks to Michael Almonese. He'll pull up for this one. And they'll reset. Fresh 20 again. Couple of big boards on the offensive glass by the Mountaineers the last couple of trips. Well, I tell you, I'm a little surprised Daquan Plowden's not in there for uh, Bowling Green. He usually patrols the, the paint. He's at double-double machine averaging over and 11 Delph rebounds a game. Pulls the Mountaineers within two. What a big time three for Adrian Delph, the junior from Gastonia, North Carolina. That's a big shot right there for Adrian. Media timeout, 329 left to go. We'll take it with them. You're watching College Basketball on ESPN. Right, 67-65, a big three from Adrian Delft, the junior from Gastonia. 
to pull the Mountaineers within two. They're on a 10-0 run over the last two minutes and 45 seconds. And we can't say enough about the charity stripe between these two. Bowling Green coming in, 84% free throw shooting team. App State, an 85% free throw shooting team. There's been a combined three misses from the charity stripe tonight. App State, 14 of 16 from the free throw line. And Bowling Green, 8 of 9. Loud in the mid-range. And App State with a chance to tie or take the lead with just over three to play here in the second half. Mountaineers have got some young guys out there. They need to be careful. Turner handled the deflection. Bowling Green with numbers. Matheny pulls up. And a big rebound from Michael Almonese and the Mountaineers. They want to slow it up. Who do you go through here if you're the Mountaineers? Well, I like the ball in Almonese's hands and, and try to get it back inside again to James Lewis Jr. or find a mismatch like they've done the last two or three possessions. Almonese spins, not once but twice, then picks his dribble up with six on the shot clock to tie. And empty was Donovan Gregory. Not a bad possession, though. Not a bad possession. They got a good shot, used some clock, took care of the basketball. Now, now they're back to playing man-to-man, -man, which I thought they did a good job in that 1-3-1 one zone of taking away Mr. Turner, who's back in business. And Turner finishes in traffic there, makes it a two-possession game, and that ends a four-minute scoring drought from Bowling Green. No Justin Forrest on the floor for Appalachian State. Almonese give and go. This one from Huntley out long range two to James Lewis. He couldn't convert. James probably should have stepped in a little bit closer off the penetration, turned that into a little four-foot bank shot. 1.30 to go here in the second half. Kendall Lewis and John Reister, we've had a treat tonight between two very good teams that are going to make noise in their conferences. Turner taking Huntley, the taller defender of the hoop, but missed it off the glass. Huntley did a great job of using his length to force Turner to shoot over the top of him and miss that shot. Bowling Green and a man-to-man -man look. They play man-to-man 99% -man of the time. Final minute, Almonese knocks it down, plus the foul. And the foul. Wow, freshman mistake by Matheny there. Flew into Almonese. Almonese's been hot. Probably should have just left him alone on that. Now we get a chance to tie the game. And a chance to knot this up at 69 all. Only 56 seconds remaining. Well, you've got to feel good if you're Appalachian State. They're 14 of 16 from the free throw line tonight. Michael Almonese has not been to the charity stripe yet. But what a ball game, partner. Well, and this is the biggest free throw of the night right here. And I'm going to tell you something. If I'm Dustin Kearns right now, I'm thinking seriously about bringing some pressure, make or miss on this free throw. They haven't pressured the entire game. I don't think Bowling Green would be ready for it. It might be the best time you could get a quick turnover. And uh, if nothing else, you know, show them something different, which has gotten them back into this ball game by playing that 1-3-1 one, one zone. I'd, I'd come out with some pressure right here if I was Coach Kearns. Make or miss. Sometimes the best time to put a press on is on a miss because you don't have time to get in your press attack. 69-68. Appalachian State trying to stay unbeaten, trying to go to 3-0 on the season. Bowling Green lost their opener to nationally ranked Michigan. But it was a good ball game. As we told you, Bowling Green, preseason MAC favorite. And Michael Almonese, the grad transfer at the free throw line to tie the game. Appalachian State on a 13 2 run over the last five minutes. And he ties it. And that looked good. He didn't hesitate at all. Good looking shot. Mountaineers back in that zone. Great move by Coach Kearns. Mountaineers were 10 down earlier in this second half. 
Fields wide open in the corner. Tipped up, loose ball, offensive board for Diggs. By, oh, that was a walk, got away with a walk. Turner, the floater, and rebound, Mounted Ears. Do they play for one here, tied? Got about, got about a three second differential in the shot clock. You gotta take it down as far as you can. 21 seconds on the game clock, 18 on the shot clock. Exactly as John said, three second differential, ball in the hands of Michael Almonese. And they need to keep it there. Shot clock down to five. Mountaineers gotta make their move. Delph rises, couldn't hit. This one tapped back up. And out of bounds, it will stay with the Mountaineers. A half a second left. Wow. Wow. C.J. Huntley had the ball. Must have forgot how much time was on the clock. Just offensive rebound, put it back up in a hurry. He had time to take a bounce and get to the rim. And all of a sudden, <laughs> timeout. And if your blood pressure hasn't risen a little bit, this has been a fun game tonight. Let's take a little look at this last possession for the Mountaineers. And I like the fact that they kept the ball in Michael Almasi's hands and uh, got it back to him. Adrian Dell didn't mind the shot. You know, he's got a guy, he knows the clock's running down. Takes a good looking shot and here is where you'd like C.J. Huntley to bring it back down, settle it, find a shooter, call timeout. But they got lucky. They got the ball back, so we got a catch-and-shoot situation here. Let's see what Coach Kearns draws up. Half a second remaining. This is a long, tall Appalachian State team. Can they get a tip at the rim here on a lob? I don't, I don't think they need a tip. At a half a point five, you got a catch-and-shoot situation. I think I know one thing. I'd put Justin Forrest out there. He's been here. He's been in this situation before, and if nothing else, he's going to garner a lot of attention. <laughs> Justin Forrest, three game winners in Sunbelt play last year for the Mountaineers. We mentioned it earlier, if this one comes down to the last possession, that he was the guy last year for the Mountaineers in clutch moments. And I know he's been sitting over there for about the last five or six minutes, but you know what? He's my guy in this situation. I think you'd have to put him out there. And instead, they keep the same five. Michael Almonese is going to trigger it in. Well, the only guy that cannot shoot the three that's out there is James Lewis Jr. So my guess is he's going to be setting the screen for Delft and bringing it out. And now they've added three tenths. So there's .8 tenths of a second left. Which gives you a couple dribbles now before you have to shoot. The only thing you got to watch out for is throwing it off the backboard. Almonese to trigger it in. Take Finds it. Delph. He got it off in time. And we are going to play more basketball get, overtime here in the side of the Holmes Convocation Center. We got some free basketball. What a night. What a night. What a game. What a ball game. Get your popcorn ready. We'll take a quick break. Overtime coming between Bowling Green and App State. John, break down this last shot for App State to try to win it in regulation. Well, we got Adrian Delf in the middle of the lane. They set a double screen down. He can decide which direction he wants to go. Actually got a wide open shot. Might have seen Daquan Plowden flying out at him, which uh, really I don't think impacted the shot. But they got a good shot, and they got a good look. So here we are in overtime, and, and we got some free basketball. College basketball not even a week old. And we've got overtime for you between two teams that I think are going to make some noise in their respective conferences. Obviously, Bowling Green picked to win the MAC, but Appalachian State feels maybe they were a little disrespected in the coaches' poll. Picked to finish fourth in the Sun Belt East. And this has been a great basketball game from start to finish. Both teams have traded leads. We had two long scoring droughts from both teams in each half. And we're going to jump this one up. Daquan Plowden and C.J. Huntley starting overtime. And he taps it right to Michael Almonese. Grad transfer has been huge. 21 points for the Mountaineers in regulation. Yeah, he's put them in a position to be in this overtime. He pretty much carried them the last 15 minutes of this game. Looking for the cutter. Gregory attacking. Had it blocked, Turner 
a strip block, if you will, and now numbers for the Falcons. This one way off the mark from Diggs on the three. And Appalachian State going to slow it up a little bit. Tied at 69 all. Yeah, the Mountaineers have done a pretty good job in their half-court offense this last, you know, five or six minutes, keeping the ball in Michael Almasy's hands, and, and I think they're pretty much going to do the same thing here, looking for the mismatch. There's nice one. take. Adrian Delph able to bully his way to the 10. And I like the fact that they're back playing the zone. It's giving, it's giving them a different look, and it's really – Kind of slowed Justin Turner down a little bit because he was he was in the process of taking this game over. Really has changed this game. The last five minutes of regulation were different. And a big three. There he is, Caden Matheny, the freshman, knocking it down. Eight points for Matheny tonight and a 72-71 Falcons lead. And Matheny was a prolific three-point shooter in high school, so it's not surprising to see him to have the green light on that. Kendall Lewis checks in for the Mountaineers. We have not seen Justin Forrest since about the five-minute mark in regulation. No, and that's a little bit surprising because this is usually Justin Forrest's time, but Coach Kearns has settled on He has done a lot of substituting this last five or six minutes. I guess he feels very comfortable with these guys. They've got a good chemistry going, getting them back in this game. This five sparked a run when the Mountaineers were 10 down. Shot clock approaching single digits. All modesty facing up, surveying the floor. Strong take, Gregory No. Tipping it around, and Matheny, the smallest player on the floor, comes away with the rebound, but then has it stolen away. Lewis, the Euro, rejected by Plowden. It's like a track meet now. Diggs finishes with the right hand. Three point Falcons lead. Big play by Daquan Plowden blocking that uh, layup by Kendall Lewis. That was a big play right there. Got the steal and didn't get a conversion out of it. Delph trying to back his way in. He's got the size advantage. And from behind, Diggs took it away. Turner absorbing contact. Count the Oh, excuse me, going the other way. I think they called a charge. Yep. Called it a charge. Yeah. One of the officials made the, the motion like they were going to count the bucket and instead a charge, and who other than Michael Almonesy to take it? Yeah, and he did a great job of getting in front of the play there, and that's number four on Justin Turner. Boy, Two, that would change the game if they could get another quick one on him. 217 left to play in overtime. Lewis attacking, lost control on the baseline. Yeah, he was. He looks like he might have banged knees with Plowden too. Those two have been going at it all night. Dustin Kearns just sent James Lewis to the scorer's table. Under two to play in an overtime. Mountaineers are back to playing man to man. Turner, spin cycle, couldn't get it to go with the right. Big possession here for the Mountaineers. You got some guys for Bowling Green that have played a lot of minutes. It wouldn't hurt for the Mountaineers to look to push it out a little bit. Here Wide in open underneath is Donovan Gregory. Bowling Green completely lost him on the backside there. Yep, somebody missed their assignment. They're going back to zone. Good, good adjustment by Coach Kearns. Maybe not, maybe they're going man. Matheny elevates off the mark, pulled in by Delph. And that's not his shot. He's not, sh he's, he's not ready to be shooting threes off the dribble. Good, good catch and shoot guy. Don't know if that's the shot that Coach Huger was looking for. Less than a minute to go in overtime. All 25 fans here in attendance on the edge of their seats. What a spin, but it's an offensive foul on Michael Almonese. I think they caught him for a hook. I didn't see it. But he's got a little bit better look at it than Let's I see if do. we can get a replay there. That's something that was a point of emphasis put in last year. And yeah, there oh it is. Yeah, oh yeah. Obvious right in front of the official. That's a tough one to give back if you're the Mountaineers, and he's played so well yeah. tonight. I think if you might have not uh, 
hit Matheny up around the head. He might have gotten away with it. Big defensive stop here for the Mountaineers. One point lead. 37 ticks left. Can't allow a three in this situation and give them a two possession lead. Looking for a quality shot. This is a patient Bowling Green offense. They like to push the tempo, but they don't force anything. Got to keep an eye on Diggs. Shot clock at three. Fields off balance. Oh, wow. Gets what the shooter's shot. roll. What a shot. Defenders draped all over him. Mountaineers got to push it up now. It's a two possession game. You can't take a whole lot of time off the clock here. 15 seconds. Elevating. Delph nearly got it to go. And it's out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Mountaineers. So eight seconds left. John, do you have to have a three here, or can you take a quick two? No, you've got to get something quick, whatever it is, be it a three or a two, but you cannot take much time off the clock. You're in a situation here where you've got to score quick, foul quick, and hope they miss some free throws. 8.3 seconds left. What will Dustin Kearns draw up for his group? What a big shot by Caleb Fields. And Caleb Fields. I don't want to call it a dagger just yet, but let's take a second look. This is clutch, and that's what you expect out of the junior. And got the roll. Known for his defensive prowess more than his shooting prowess, but I tell you what, he probably hadn't hit a shot bigger than that in his entire career. It's only his second made three of the night. So 77-73, Bowling Green with that four-point lead. Falcons looking to go to two and one. Appalachian State trying to stay unbeaten and move to three and zero. Oh. And 8.3 seconds in college basketball, an absolute eternity. But you can't waste it. You got the ball under the basket, which could give you a quick one or two second shot if you run a you know an effective inbounds play. But you can't start dribbling it around because the clock's not going to stop for you. What a ball game here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center tonight. Kendall Lewis and John Reister, glad to bring you the action here on ESPN+. Plus. College basketball just five days old, and we've already got an overtime to show you. A couple of overtime games across the country as well. A couple of screens. Delft's got to elevate from the corner. He hit it. 6.1 seconds got a foul. left. Now you got a foul. Which they did, they fouled Turner. Wrong guy to foul maybe, but. But you, you can't pick somebody in that situation because you're playing the clock. You're not playing the shooters. If he makes both of these, which he probably will, you still have four and a half, five seconds to get the ball down and get another three point shot. Couple of scenarios coming into play here with 4.7 seconds left. Get to that here in just a second. So Justin, and it's, and it's a one and one, Kendall. It's not a two shot foul because neither team's in the double bonus. So Turner with the one and one here makes it. He'll get another. So here's an interesting scenario. It talked about one of the most controversial across the country. No matter who you ask, you have 4.7 seconds left. If you're Bowling Green and Turner hits this, do you foul App, put him on the free throw line? All they can get is two. He missed and it. you can win. He missed it, so now that's off the table. Oh, Monacy for, the, for win. the win. Oh! Nearly got it to go. Boy, that was right on line, too. Wow. I thought that was going in, Kendall. Hard-fought effort for both teams. 78-76, the final score. Bowling Green improves to 2-1 and one on the season. And Appalachian State, 2-1 and one now with their first loss of the season, but both of these teams left it all out on the floor. Great basketball on display tonight. Well, I tell you what, we had a different kind of game than you and I expected. We, we thought it was going to be up and down. Teams were going to pressure each other, and I think both teams kind of played a little closer to the vest, and it turned out to be a whale of a ball game in overtime. 78-76, the overtime victory for Michael Huger and the Bowling Green Falcons. Once again, 2-1 and one on the season, and Justin Turner looked the part, 25 points, 9 of 15 shooting. He was 7 of 8 from the charity stripe. 
And let's give credit to Michael Omanese for Appalachian State. 21 points, a big second half. He had six, he was six of eight from three point land, seven of 12 shooting. So six of his seven made shots tonight were from three and has really provided quality minutes for the Mountaineers of App State. Handful of players go in double figures for the Mountaineers as well as Bowling Green. And just a hard fought effort from both teams here tonight. I tell you, with Michael Almasley, they may have found the leadership uh, void that was left when O'Shawn Williams graduated last year. They looked really, really good, Mountaineers did, when, when he was controlling the offense. Um, he does a good job of distributing the basketball and knowing when to shoot the three. None of them were forced, none of them were rushed. And uh, when, like you said, he's, he's played four years of basketball, or three years of basketball already, so uh, there's nothing gonna be out there that's gonna shake him. Very impressed with him in the last eight minutes, and without him playing like that, the Mountaineers wouldn't have been in the game. Bowling Green shoots 51% from the field and makes seven threes here tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN to view this game in its entirety, along with other games streaming on the ESPN family of networks. Be sure to visit ESPN.com or the ESPN app. For Kendall Lewis alongside John Reister and the rest of our production crew, we say so long and good night from inside the Holmes Convocation Center.